Uh, hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Lee Briggs. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a tool that I wrote um, which solved um, one problem and then kind of developed into something that could solve many problems called Sensu Wrapper. Uh, a little bit of an introduction about who I am. Uh, I'm now based in Seattle as of last week. I've uh, been in London for eight years. Uh, I've been around the Sensu community for, for a long time. Um, I'm one of the maintainers of the Sensu Puppet module. Um, I work for a company called Aptio. Uh, we're based in Seattle, um, but we have operations team members all around the globe. Uh, we are currently hiring if you are interested in working with a very large Sensu uh, implementation. Um, we have um, around 5,500 Sensu clients across development and production, um, and we've been using it since 2012. Uh, I don't remember which version it was, but it, uh, all I remember is that um, a lot of people complained because it didn't do client masquerading, uh, which I think Kyle uh, opened an issue for and uh, rallied for very heavily back, uh, back in those days. Um, and if you want to follow me and stalk me around the internet, there's a bunch of things there um, which you can, you can use to do so. Um, so, um, we've had it mentioned a couple of times now, which actually surprises me uh, because there's not a lot of documentation about it. It's kind of stashed away in the Sensu client um, documentation. Uh, but the Sensu socket has been really, really useful for us, and it sounds like it's been useful for a bunch of other people as well. Um, so, to give an idea for those of you who might not be familiar with it, I'm sure everybody is, but just as making, sh making sure that we're uh, aware of it. Um, basically, you can pipe JSON to the Sensu socket either via TCP, UDP, and now over HTTP, um, and it will create a check within Sensu. Um, the Sensu client page documentation has some kind of nifty um, uh, little examples of how, you know, using Bash's uh, dev TCP, uh, using Netcat. Um, uh, and we started using this in a bunch of our scripts, uh, like any self-respecting operations uh, environment. We have a bunch of one-off scripts that people have deployed and not put in configuration management. Um, and the way that we started monitoring them is people logged into the box and added a little thing in the function that says, if this fails, then send an alert. Um, and Obviously, that's completely untenable. Uh, we were getting monitoring alerts and not even realizing which box it was coming from, uh, which script it was coming from. Um, and it just got really, really frustrating. Um, so I looked around a little bit uh, for a solution, and there wasn't really a good one. Um, so this is where Sensu Wrapper caves in, comes in. Before I give you an idea of what it does, I'll give you a little bit of history about what we tried. Uh, originally, there was the Sensu Shell Helper, which Kyle wrote, um, and it, it, there was an issue saying, rewrite this in something not Bash, because um, manipulating JSON in Bash is not fun. Um, so I had a go at writing it in Ruby, and it was terrible. Um, we use CentOS 6 quite heavily. Uh, CentOS 6 has Ruby 1.8.7. I wanted to use some of the nicer things about Ruby. I had to use the Sensu Ruby. Uh, installing it was a nightmare. Um, it just wasn't fun. Um, and we had a bunch of things like thread executions and all that kind of, sorry, uh, parallel threads and all that kind of stuff, which wasn't fun. Uh, concurrency in Ruby is not, not a great thing to do, deal with, um, uh, I'm, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, so I tore it all down and uh, wrote it again in Go uh, about uh, 11 months ago. Um, this gives you all the benefits of Go. If you're not familiar, uh, it's a single binary. Uh, super easy to install. If you have a Go application, you just download it and it's just available uh, and it will work. Uh, you got cross compilation, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's great with, with JSON. It's, it's a first class citizen in Go. Uh, and the standard library in, in Go is really easy. So uh, I chose to write it in Go uh, and this is what came out of it. Uh, so, what exactly does Sensu Wrapper do? Um, basically, it will encapsulate any command that you send to it. It runs the command, and then it returns the standard out, all the standard error, depending on what happened with the command, and then an exit code. Um, obviously, Sensu relies on exit codes, Nagios compliant exit codes. So Sensu Wrapper has a bit of logic in it to make sure that you get a Nagios compliant exit code, because some developers like to use random exit codes, like 17. Um, uh, if the command fail, uh, sorry, it will then uh, create some JSON, which it then pipes to the Sensu socket, uh, and it creates a Sensu event. In order to actually use it, it was nice and, it's nice and easy to install. You just download it, untar it, and you just run it, uh, which gives you a massive advantage if you want to do things like uh, use configuration management. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Here's a, uh, hopefully you can see that, here's just an output of the kind of things that, um, that you get out of the command, and I'll give you a quick demo uh, in a few minutes. Um, but basically, it's just not, it, there's just a couple of, um, couple of command line parameters, um, and then you just pipe it a command. Uh, so here's some examples. 
First of all, uh, you can do a dry run to see exactly what uh, JSON will be created. Um, as you can see here, I've just uh, named the check that will be created test check, and I've run the ls command, which gives me the output of whatever's in that directory. Um, and then you can obviously add handlers. In this case, I've added the default handler, and I've called the source my MacBook, and it just appends that to the JSON. Um, and then when it creates the sensor event, it, it works uh, really easily. Uh, some more uh, complex, I guess, options or fancier options. Um, Sensu has support for TTLs, so if you add a TTL, uh, it adds the TTL part of the JSON, which means that if the command doesn't run for a while, then it will create a warning event. I think it got fixed in a recent version that you know, can now specify it to be a critical event. Um, and then you can also add um, arbitrary JSON on the command line. Um, having seen a bunch of sensor implementations, a lot of people, um, in fact, uh, raise your hands if you've got some kind of custom JSON in your uh, sensor infrastructure for your handlers or something like that. So one of the things that I noticed when I showed this off in one of the UK meetups is they're like, this isn't working for me because I have things like a tip or a run book or something and um, I can't add that. So you can now add uh, some just whatever JSON you want. You can either do it from a file which lives on the file system or you can just specify it on the command line. Uh, once, once the um, Sensu socket stuff was um, figured out, then um, the API was introduced. Um, so you can now also send results from the API, uh, to, sorry, to the API. Um, we use this really, really heavily uh, in certain parts of our infrastructure, um, simply because Sensu can't be installed on things like, uh, you know, networking equipment and net apps and you know, inside Docker containers, or you can, but you probably shouldn't. Um, uh, and because it's a Golang um, binary, you can just install it on all of these things and it will just work. Um, so we've done things like, um, we get an alert when a F5 sync doesn't work. Uh, we use it in Kubernetes init containers when we do a setup job during Kubernetes um, um, deployments. Um, we use the Kubernetes beta resource, cron jobs, and we use it for that. Um, there's a bunch of other applications which we haven't used. For example, we're looking at using it in Cisco switches, on our NetApp file system, uh, filers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so rewriting it in Go turned out to be, a, hopefully, a pretty good, pretty good decision. Once you've obviously installed it, you get a couple, uh, uh, some additional tooling. Um, there's a Puppet module to install it. Um, we obviously just had a show of hands. If you're using Puppet, uh, you can install it uh, really easily using Puppet Sensu Wrapper. Um, and if you want to start monitoring cron jobs, which is our main usage for this tool, uh, you can use this cron module and then just add a couple parameters like monitor job and monitor TTL, and you basically get monitoring for free, um, which is really, really useful. Um, basically, we now have all of our cron jobs under etc cron.d, um, and then as a result, uh, we purge all the, this stops people adding random cron jobs, um, which you know operations guys obviously do, um, to update your IRC bouncer or something. Um, and so we purge, all the, we purge that directory with cron, and all, it's all managed by Puppet, uh, and you can add all the other stuff that you would, um, would you li you'd like to do with Sensu, um, with Sensu Wrapper, like the handler, the TTL, and the name, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do a very quick demo. I put this together about 20 minutes ago, so if it doesn't work, I'm not responsible. Um, so I've set up a little sensor environment here. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be showing on this screen, so this is going to be fun. Um, so I can do sensor wrapper minus D, and it will just give me the output. If I give it a name, uh, oh man, this is hard. Uh, list this, and then ls minus one. Uh, this is the, obviously the output that you would get. Um, and then if I do a directory that doesn't exist, I get an exit port code of two, and obviously it fails. Um, if I remove the minus D, it will send it to Sensu. And if I come in here, there's my list directories um, result. Um, uh, I can do things like add a source of not my problem, because it's never my problem. Um, oh, I need to actually run the command. Um, and it should create a new client. Uh, it will eventually create a new client. There you go, there's a not my problem client. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. Um, in order to actually show off the cron job stuff, uh, I've set up a quick puppet, um, puppet configuration here. Um, obviously, I've got an rsync job. 
uh, which is running from slash TMP because we all store our backups there, right? Um, and then obviously I've added some JSON and all that kind of stuff. So if I run puppet y module path equal dot modules. And we spend ages waiting for puppet now because it's gonna do its little thing. Um, You can see here it's creating a nice cron job. Uh, because I've already installed Sensu Wrapper, it's not actually going to download and install it, but it would if it wasn't there. Um, here's what the actual command looks like. I'm running it as root. It specified a name of cron async backups. Um, it set a TTL of 60 seconds, uh, you know, giving it a, a source and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then eventually, in about 60 seconds, it would run, and you would see it appear here. Um, so hopefully that's a, a reasonable uh, example of how easy it is to get this kind of cron job monitoring. Um, I wanted to do a little quick demo of um, some of the, the Docker stuff that we're doing, but unfortunately I don't have enough time. Um, I will quickly show how to use the API. Uh, oh, I need a name, sorry. Oh, see, I told you this wasn't this wasn't well planned at all. So, apologies. Uh, actually, it needs to be results. There you go. So it's issued the uh, it's issued it against the API, uh, and now I have um, my invalid um, against the API, basically. So. Um, if you would like to contribute to this, um, there are a bunch of things that are still needed. Um, if you'd like to use it, I'd love to talk to you. Um, but um, I'm not a particularly good developer, so please don't judge me for the code. Uh, it's really bad. Um, but if you'd, like to hope with, if you'd like to help with any better quality code, uh, some tests, uh, any general bug fix fixes, uh, new features, um, obviously Sensu is continuously developing and moving forward. Um, they will all be gratefully received, and I would be happy to talk to you. We've got a whole day tomorrow, um, so please uh, feel free to chat with me. Thank you, Lee. Um, next up is going to be Chris. He's on his way up, so we'll have you unplug. Yep. Any quick question for Lee while we're swapping out? Another cool story of the Sensu, uh, Sensu socket use cases. Oh, there's a question in the back. Hey, um, so I was wondering whether or not, um, I know it's available on GitHub under your own user, but I was wondering if uh, Sensu created uh, a place, uh, a home for it, whether um, you'd be interested in transferring that over. Um, that way it would be. <laughs> That's a good question. Probably for us to answer. <laughs> good thing. That's right. All right. Uh, thank you, Lee, again.